Welcome to this week's reflection. My name's Reverend Amanda Hay, and this is the final week in our series where we've been asking, well, what we've been meaning to ask. This week we ask, where do we go from here? So let us begin. The scripture reading today comes from the book of Ruth, chapter 1, verses 1 to 22. During the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. A man with his wife and two sons went from Bethlehem of Judah to dwell in the territory of Moab. The name of that man was Elimelech. The name of his wife was Naomi. And the names of his two sons were Marlon and Chilon. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem in Judah. They entered the territory of Moab and settled there. But Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died. Then only she was left, along with her two sons. They took wives for themselves, Moabite women. The name of the first was Orpah, and the name of the second was Ruth. And they lived there for about ten years. But both of their sons, Marlon and Chilion, also died. Only the woman was left, without her two children and without her husband. Then she rose along with her daughters-in-law to return from the field of Moab, because while in the territory of Moab, she had heard that the Lord had paid attention to his people by providing food for them. She left the place where she had been, and her two daughters-in-law went with her. They went along the road to return to the land of Judah. Naomi said to her daughters-in-law, Go, turn back, each of you to the household of your mother. May the Lord deal faithfully with you, just as you have done with the dead and with me. May the Lord provide for you so that you may find security each woman in the household of her husband. Then she kissed them and they lifted up their voices and wept. But they replied to her, no, instead we will return with you to your people. Naomi replied, turn back my daughters. Why would you go with me? Will there again be sons in my womb that they would be husbands for you? Turn back my daughters, go. I am too old for a husband. If I were to say that I have hope, even if I had a husband tonight, and even more if I were to bear sons, would you wait until they grew up? Would you refrain from having a husband? No, my daughters, it's more bitter for me than for you, since the Lord's will has come out against me. Then they lifted up their voices and wept again. Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth stayed with her. Naomi said, Look, your sister-in-law is returning to her people and to her gods. Turn back after your sister-in-law. But Ruth replied, Don't urge me to abandon you, to turn back from following after you. Wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. Wherever you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord do this to me, and more so, if even death separates me from you. When Naomi saw that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped speaking to her about it. So both of them went along until they arrived at Bethlehem. When they arrived at Bethlehem, the whole town was excited on account of them, and the women of the town asked, Can this be Naomi? She replied to them, Don't call me Naomi, but call me Mara, for the Almighty has made me very bitter. I went away full, but the Lord has returned me empty. Why would you call me Naomi when the Lord has testified against me, and the Almighty has deemed me guilty? Thus Naomi returned, and Ruth the Moabite, 
her daughter-in-law, returned with her from the territory of Moab. They arrived in Bethlehem at the beginning of the barley harvest. For the word of God in scripture and story. For the word of God among us. For the word of God within us. We give thanks. We end our I've Been Meaning to Ask series this week with a question which is meant to spark a new beginning. Where do we go from here? We started asking questions which situated ourselves in relationships with others, learning more about one another, moving into a posture of listening to the hurts and needs of the other. And we are now moving into a space where we take that posture of listening and learning to look beyond where we are now. And we look into that future together. The scripture reading for this week comes from the book of Ruth. This story is set in a time where Israel was ruled by judges. Now the book of Judges goes into this in way more detail, but for the story today, it's important to recognize that the time of Judges was tumultuous. It was a time which explored the people and leaders of Israel breaking the laws of their Jewish faiths. And with this time period as a backdrop, the story of Ruth becomes one where an individual goes above and beyond that law, who breaks tradition and custom to create deep relationship and a new kind of family because of the love that she has. The story begins in a national crisis. Aside from it being in the time of judges, famine ravages the land. Seemingly to add insult to injury, Naomi loses her husband and then her two sons, who are Ruth and Orpah's husbands. We hear that Orpah and Ruth are Moabites, foreigners in the land of Israel. Ruth and Orpah's culture and heritage was considered less than, almost rude and barbaric uh, by the Israelites. And with the death of the men in the family, Orpah, Ruth and Naomi are thrust into some of the most vulnerable categories in their society. Ruth and Orpah even more so than Naomi. Naomi, in her grief, turns to her daughters-in-law and implores them to return to Moab, where their people may be able to care for them better than if they were to stay and be treated as second-rate citizens by the Hebrew people. After a little bit of argument, Orpah follows Naomi's directions with a kiss goodbye, and she leaves for Moab. But Ruth stays. Ruth declares to Naomi that they are bound to one another, that her pain is their pain, that Naomi's people, culture, and her God, the God of Israel, would now also be Ruth's God. That wherever Naomi journeys, so too shall Ruth. Ruth, out of love and connection with Naomi, breaks custom and social norms to start an even greater journey than the one that they had been on. One with no assurance of security. In Naomi's questioning of where do we go from here, Ruth's answer centers around taking where Ruth is from and what she needs and how she hurts and forging ahead to break bonds with the normal or appropriate things in life 
in order to show Naomi love and relationship. Thus, as Naomi and Ruth head down the road to Judah, a new kind of family emerges. A family and connection no longer based on legal ties, but a family that is chosen for the good of the other. As the pair enter into Bethlehem, meaning the house of bread, their new connection seems to be celebrated by the beginning of the barley harvest. All aspects of their story moving from famine to feast. Ruth's response to Naomi echoes God's response to us all. God's love and faithfulness was made flesh in Ruth and is made known in Jesus Christ and is made known in us when we choose the path of love and connection rather than disconnection and othering. When we allow our narrow perceptions to expand and make way for hospitality and community. When we understand that God's circle of love is drawn wider than we may ever know or perhaps want. Jesus was known to take rules and redefine what it meant to embody those rules. Ruth does something similar. Just like Ruth, we can become an agent of new life and start our journeys of where we go from here if we embed these journeys in the understanding that God's love and inclusion is far-reaching and endless and that we are bound to one another because of that love. What that looks like in your discipleship practices will differ from one to the other. It might mean stepping outside of your comfort zone to connect with someone in a language that you may not speak. And when I say language, I don't just mean spoken language or written language, but digital language or an artistic language. It might mean finding places of people outside of your church community and family to discover what hurts them, how to heal them, what, what they are passionate about, and connect with them through these pains and passions. Because in the words of Anna Carter Florence, everything is a story and a segue to the kingdom of God. Now, this is not to convert them to faith, but rather because your faith converts you to love and for you to reach out. Asking where do we go from here is meant to foster hope and lead us into a space of creativity Letting go of what we do because we've always done it. To seek connection with those beyond our personal and church building walls. We need to be breaking tradition and self-serving practices in our lives and in our churches. Not to do away with where we've come from but to create space for relationship and connection. Even if that relationship and connection doesn't look like anything we've done before and may have no assurance of comfort or security. But we do it anyway, because we have seen love firsthand, because we follow God love itself and we are called to show the world how far that love extends so where do we go from here 
Amen. Friends, receive this blessing from wherever you may be. Family of faith, as you leave these places of worship, may God grant you the curiosity to counter assumptions, the vulnerability to befriend, the bravery to speak your truth, the wisdom to listen, the strength to ask for help, the resiliency to choose love even when it's hard, and the awareness of the Holy Spirit always beside you. In the name of the great connector, love itself. Go in peace. Amen.